What's up guys? So you have made it to part four of the series. Uh, today we're going to get into welding the bottom bracket on, showing you the jig that I use to hold the bottom bracket in, the seat post and seat post material, and we're going to go over spacing the dropout and a little bit of the tube notcher. I'm going to show you a, a little bit more on how I use that and how versatile that tool can be. Um, remember, like and subscribe, and if you have any questions, put them down below. Also, attach all the links to everything you need right in the description. So, go get it. All right, let's go get this done. Okay, guys, so we're going to go over your seat post material and placement. Um, this is 7 8 DOM tubing. Um, you can go with a 0 0.065 like the frame is, or if you want it to be a little thicker, go with a 0 0.083. Uh, that's the thickness again. I haven't done the holes yet for this, but I'm looking at running my seat around this area. Now what really determines where you're gonna put your seat is where you're gonna put your wheel. If you want your wheel running all nice and close like this, you of course can't put your seat there. So. Yes, you could mount it here if you wanted to. If you wanted that look, you could come up here. Um, this one, I wanted it to be a little bit longer. So I want to run the seat off-centered. So which is going to pull the wheel back a little bit more. Like so. So this right here is going to tell me if that's where I want my seat. Then this is going to tell me where I want to set up my wheel. So... What I like to do is I will draw a line on the actual jig table or the jig itself from the center point down. So that way I know where I'm going to mount up my bracketry for the uh, dropouts. So once you've got this set, I already have a line there because this is where I put them anyway. And then we will get on, get on to putting in the holes for the back legs like I did here and setting up the jig to uh, show you how to do the back. Okay, so it's time to set up our dropouts. This is what holds your back wheel on. This is your dropout. This is the, the jig to hold your dropouts. This is where you get this piece right here from uh, Chop Source Customs. That's who makes this piece. Other piece was just mine from tubing that I had. I'm gonna take this here. This is gonna slide down into the jig. And then I'm going to line it up with the wheels or with the line that I made for my wheel. So once I have that where I want it, kind of eyeball it. If you have to, take what wheel you want to use or what spare wheel you want to use. You can lay it there, kind of see. I've got plenty of room. Now you're going to take your bottom brackets, your dropouts. We're going to place these in here like so and then you're going to tighten them down. You're not going to line them up yet. You don't need to move this anymore. So I'm going to get it where I need it. So I am level on there and then what I like to do is take my level and make sure that I'm level this way. Because if you're not level this way, if this is off and this one's straight, when you go slide your wheel in there, it's gonna make your wheel tip to one side or the other. So you want these, if, any, if anything on this bike you want straight, this'll be the part. So I'm actually pretty good on that one. This one is a little too high, so we'll come in, little tap. I'm there. That one's perfect. This one maybe a little bit. And also give it a good eyeball too. Make sure you're not it doesn't look weird to you. There's some things on custom frames that you can adjust because again they're custom. So there's gonna be a few things that you can play with to help you out. So we're good there. So that is already locked in, that's perfect. So now, once this is set, I'm gonna go ahead, 
figure out exactly where I want my seat post. I'm going to put a hole there because I like to weld my stuff inside. You don't have to. Again, like I said, you can lay that seat post down. And if you know how to cope really well, add some gussets, which I'll do anyway just for extra strength. But I'm going to put it there. Uh, one thing I also need to make sure is that when I am going to put this seat post here, am I where I want to be? So again, I like my seat 34 to 36. And if I put it right here, that's exactly where I want to be. So that works perfectly for me. And I'm going to Scribe that because I'll put that inside the frame right there and it'll probably slide down and the seat on the bottom does have some play because of a normal a regular bicycle seat you do have a little bit of play back and forth uh, or you can flip the bracket to lower the seat some more um, there's a few different things you can do to make sure that that's correct but I'm going to put it I'll probably even cut this some so that I don't need to be because I think right about there is where I want to be I'm going to mark that real quick This seems to be the spot because I like my seat just sitting right above that little part there. Probably gonna put that. That's where that hole will go. I will put that. That hole does have to be at an angle or that's not going to go in. So that'll go as an angle. And then I'm probably going to run my back legs. We'll get on to determine where we're going to do that, but we'll run these, you know, we'll run them across here. And I kind of, I, I like a little bit of a slope. If you don't, if you run these straight across and you find yourself going downward, you might have a problem on this side because your chain has to come through here. So let's say you ran this down too far. Now your chain bumps into it because it has to go around your sprocket and back. And you're going to have some play in it because you're using two chains sometimes, maybe a chain and a half. So what I'll do is I will not, I will put it on the top of this bottom bracket or the top of this dropout and I'll come up just a little bit just to give me an angle because I, I don't usually do really fancy back ends. So um, I like them nice and simple and functional. So I'll run that up and that'll bring me, you know, roughly into here. I'll probably drill the hole right through there. And then I'm going to do something cool from here down to the front just to make it look kind of neat run probably a double tube which I haven't done that before all right let's get done guys I did want to show you really quick um, why I enjoy this machine so much you can see the amount of angle I can get on this so you see where I have to get that seat post at that weird angle that's gonna get me there like you know this machine isn't they're not Chicago you know they're not sponsoring me by any means um i just i bought this machine a buddy of mine was using it he showed it to me i showed a few people since and i love it so it just makes life so much easier to put these holes in uh, i even do my bottom brackets with it you just want to make sure that the frame's level and then go from there all right let's get the seat post done But here you can see, that's why I do that. You see how easy that is and how nice that fits in there? So the other uh, jig is your bottom bracket jig. And you can see how this holds everything in. You can get this, the cones. You can get the whole setup from Chop Source. Um, I just purchased this because I already had the cones and then I made my own uh, holder part here. The brackets down at the bottom come with it. Um, but you need this. This is going to hold that steady straight with the frame. This, you want to get this as close as possible to perfect. Like I said, it, none of our frames are perfect. There isn't a builder out there that makes a perfect frame uh, because they're just handmade. But getting it as close as possible is necessary, especially this, because if this is tilted one way or the other, it could make your chain constantly pop off. Um, you could run into some alignment issues. So get this as straight as you can. Even before I weld anything on, I'll take a ruler and I'll check each side. Um, I have a line on the ruler. That makes sure that both sides 
are exactly the same. Measure that out, uh, measure it 15 times if you have to, and then uh, burn it in. And usually what I'll do is I will tack it. Um, he does make a full rotisserie. So you can get a jig that completely flips upside down, which is great because it's really hard to weld under here. Usually what I do is I'll burn all of this in and then later flip the frame over itself and, and weld it because it's, it's structurally tight, it's in there, it's not going anywhere. So I'm gonna knock that real quick. All right guys, we're gonna go over the distancing that you're gonna need on your dropouts. This is really gonna determine on what type of a hub you use. If you use a single speed standard hub, you don't need any more than five inches back here. So five inches from inside to inside. Now, let's say you're gonna use a fat tire bike that you got off of a Huffy or, or and that's the rim you're using. They come in like a four inch wide rim. They use a seven inch wide single speed hub. This is gonna to need to be moved out seven inches. This is what determines your width, not necessarily the size of the wheel that you're using. I can fit a five inch wheel in here if I'm using a five inch hub. But if I'm using a seven inch hub, this goes out seven inches. So that's how you're gonna space these. Um, like I said, again, that's more important than worrying about what size wheel you're gonna use. Okay, here's what you end up with. Now, what I'm gonna do is cut this down the center and now I have two sides. Um, so I just kind of mark it where my center is and you can eyeball this because you're not going to use it all anyway. And I will cut that in half and then I'll have two separate legs. Depending on how far apart your frame is, that should be enough. All right, so here's where our legs are mounted. We're doing the upper legs now. The holes are already drilled into the frame. So this slides into that hole, like I said, you don't have to necessarily do that. You could cope it and fit it there to weld it, but because I have the um, tubing notcher, I use it. Here's where I'm gonna figure out where I want my angle. Get you a couple clamps, throw that on there. Now I'm gonna measure out to make sure that my back is straight here. And then once I've done this, there we go, I'm leveled out. So once I've done this, I'm gonna go ahead and draw a line here where I wanna cut the bottom of that off of there. So I'm gonna to wanna to trim this little bit of edge there. I don't want that, this piece left over. And then I'll cap that off. Just grab your marker. And because this is coming down at an angle, the cut will be a little bit of an angle. So just to show you guys here, I take a piece of one inch tubing, I'll take a like 16 gauge steel, trace that on there, and then cut that out. After you've trimmed this, you'll weld that on there and grind that smooth to get your finished leg. So real quick, I just do a couple tack welds on this and you can see this is your end cap. That little extra that you have here, we're gonna grind that off. So, and you're gonna grind all the welds off anyway. So that's what I said. You're gonna kind of start with a little something like this, put it on the edge of there, tack weld that on, tack where it's flat. And then if you have any hangover here, you don't want to weld on that because the weld might not penetrate as well. So go ahead and take your grinder and get that all nice and smooth so that it's even and then finish tack welding it all the way around. It just needs some tack welds, little tack welds all over to hold it on. This isn't structural. This is more of a just, so that you don't have a big hole going inside. And there you go. One capped off end. Nice and clean. Pretty simple. Let's install it. Okay, so we have our leg. We'll come over here. That slides into the hole. And we put that right where we want that. And then we're gonna clamp it down. And then what I'll do is just throw a couple tack welds on here to hold it in until I get the other side done. Um, but this is pretty much where it's gonna stay. All right guys, well that's all we have for this one. Um, I ran a little short on time. Uh, I will get on the back lower legs on the next episode just to, we'll jump right into that. Um, but we're just about there. I mean, once this bottom legs are on, uh, we can go ahead and finish weld everything and it's basically a roller. So uh, until next time.